Alright, so good day class. So today we're going to continue SPP201. So we're now into architectural research. So let's discuss this first. So what's the purpose, the process, and the outcomes for architectural research? So when you say architectural research, the purpose is to gather and analyze information that will inform the design process. Then for the process, it involves collecting data on various aspects such as site conditions, historical context, user needs, and environmental factors. So it's really important guys, um, it's considered already architectural research if you're going to ask uh, the client regarding uh, his or her needs or the user needs. Of course, you're going to ask the client what type of house or building you want to build. Uh, what are their preferences in terms of color, in terms of design? Of course, also you should ask also about the historical context of the project, how it began, and then what's uh, the history uh, of the site. And then, of course, the site conditions you have to know, and other environmental factors as well. Then, for the outcome, so it provides a solid foundation for making informed design, design decisions and developing innovative. A solution so the keyword there is a solid foundation so if you're going to start a project without architectural research then your project is, is bound to fail because it doesn't have a solid foundation that makes architectural research really important then for the next we have architectural programming so the purpose of architectural programming is to define the project's requirements and objectives second the process is involves identifying the needs and goals of the clients and users as well as the functional and spatial requirements of the building. So I guess that you are at this stage already in your studies in architecture. You're already aware of how to do uh, architectural programming. So it's really important that you have an idea of the functional and spatial requirements of the building that you're designing. Especially if you're doing uh, projects that are... Um, uh, uh, large in scope already which is beyond the residential uh, projects so as the project becomes more complex it's important that you create an architectural program for it and the outcome the results in a program document that outlines the scope of work project goals and design criteria okay. so the resulting uh, program uh, document of course you really have to know the scope of work uh, what's going to be built then the project goals, of course, uh, the, what are the goals of the project and the design criteria also, which is really important. Then the importance of uh, research and programming, the first thing it does is that it produces an informed design. So it ensures that design is based on a thorough understanding of the project context and requirements. So I think that's self-explanatory already. So without research and programming, we won't be able to achieve an informed design. That's why as in your lives as students, you're still in architectural school, we really, we really encourage you to um, do your research before you, before you begin your the design. Second is efficiency. So it helps in optimizing the use of resources and minimizing the need for changes during later stages of the project. So without research and programming, you could really see a lot of changes uh, happening at a later stage because um, you were not able to identify uh, possible problems at the beginning. So without research and programming, you won't be able also to maximize uh, your, res your resources for the project. And client satisfaction so it ensures that the final design meets meets the needs and expectations of the clients and the users so remember this guys the importance of research and programming is that first informed design second efficiency the third is client satisfaction so for a brief discussion so can you think of a project where architectural research significantly influence the design approach so let's answer this in a general context. So, for example, you have a client that approaches you that you should design a hospital. If you do not uh, do 
to do a background check, you're going to have problems because a hospital is uh, quite complicated. So without architectural research and programming, you won't be able to arrive on a solution that is efficient and satisfies the client. So that's how important architectural research is. Second is that what if client asks you to design a museum? Uh, a cultural means uh, something a uh, uh, cultural uh, center uh, perhaps so if you don't do research and architectural programming then you're going to have a hard time then how does architectural programming contribute to the success of a project so architectural uh, programming uh, contributes to the success of a project because with with uh, with architectural programming you could at least be sure that what you are designing has basis. I'm, I'm sure that it won't be perfect, but the things that you design, you'll be able to explain them because every line that you do in your design has a meaning and it has basis. And it's something that in the end will be appreciated by the client. Okay, slide. So we have space planning. Okay, so let's talk about space planning. So the purpose of space planning is to determine the size, configuration, and assemblage of spaces within a building to meet the functional requirements of the occupants. So when you talk about space programming, you're already talking about the size, the configuration, its shape, and assemblage of spaces. Then the process also involves analyzing the space requirements based on the client's needs, the building program, and the relationships between the different spaces. So the outcome, the results, is a space plan that optimizes the use of space, enhances functionality, and supports the building's overall design concept. So space planning comes after uh, architectural programming because in, in architectural programming it's not yet uh, defined uh, I'll, I'll just make the slide bigger okay this way does excuse me okay I think I'm able to read the discussion now so like what I've said before um, when you talk about uh, space planning, it, it comes after the space programming. Because in space programming, you do not know yet the uh, size and configuration. You just know that some spaces are adjacent to each other. But in space planning, you already have an idea of the size and configuration. So it's important to know this because you're going to do space programming and space planning when you reach uh, your higher design, especially in design. Uh, Design plan. So space management, so the purpose is to ensure that the allocated spaces are used efficiently and effectively over time. So the process is that it involves monitoring and adjusting the use of space to accommodate in the organization or its activities. So the outcome, it ensures that the building remains adaptable and responsive to the evolving needs of its occupants. So you should understand, guys, that um, the, the client hires you uh, as a professional because you understand, uh, you have an idea of what their future needs will be. So that's why your the spaces that you design should be adaptable uh, over time. And the next, the importance of space management and planning. First one is efficiency. So maximizes the use of available space reducing wasted areas and optimizing operational efficiency. The next is flexibility. So it allows for future modifications and adaptations to changing needs without major disruptions. Then third is user satisfaction. So it ensures that the spaces meet the functional and aesthetic needs of the users, enhancing their comfort and productivity. So if you really need the fa I think the, your function as an architect is to make sure really that the space you design meets the functional and aesthetic requirements of the people that will be using it. 
so that you'll be more comfortable and more productive especially when you're designing office buildings when you're designing hospitals it's important uh, to take, take into consideration the comfort of the doctors in the hospital the comfort of the nurses as well as the patients as well and of course it should enhance their productivity so make sure that the spaces uh, the departments that need to be adjacent with each other are in fact indeed adjacent so that the uh, hospital will function more efficiently so that's how important space planning and space management is but of course uh, um, the basis for your space planning, space management is your architectural programming. So for a discussion, can you share an example for a project where space planning and management played a crucial uh, role in its success? Second, how do you think technology has impacted the process of space management and planning in recent years? So for this, for this discussion, guys, this will be part of your activity now. So, you're going to answer that in the essay later on, which I will give you. Okay, next slide. Next is value management. So, the purpose of value management is to ensure that the project achieves the best possible balance between cost, quality, and functionality. So, it's just a balance guys it's not necessarily that you think about only cost because if you think about only cost your project might uh, might be cheap or or expensive but it's not uh, functional so quality also should have uh, a balance of this and also functionality the process it involves analyzing the design and construction processes to identify opportunities for cost reduction without compromising the project objectives or performance. So the outcome results in a project that provides maximum value for the investment with efficient use of resources and optimal performance. So when you think of a project, guys, you should look into it that uh, the buildings that you're going to design, it's an investment for your client. So you have to make sure that their money is well spent. So... It does not necessarily mean that you have to buy uh, the most expensive materials. It's just there should just be a balance of everything. And the cost and the quality of the material going to use, of course, how functional it will be. But I think um, the idea there is that you should be able to reach the client's budget without compromising anything. Okay? For the design brief preparation, the purpose of that is to clearly identify the project's objectives, requirements, and constraints. Of course, constraints, every project has a limitation, be it be physical limitation, be it be financial limitation. So, you should always think that, the, um, especially here in the Philippines, our projects, um, they have constraints. So, you really have to balance everything. So, for the process, so it involves gathering and documenting all relevant information including the client's needs, project scope, budget, schedule, and any specific design consideration. So the outcome, it provides a comprehensive document that serves as a guide for the design team, ensuring that all project stakeholders have a clear understanding of the project's goals and expectations. So the importance of value management and design brief preparation uh, first is cost efficiency because it helps in achieving cost savings while maintaining the quality and functionality of the project. Second, it provides a clear direction. So it provides a clear and concise framework for the design and construction process, reducing the likelihood of misunderstandings and errors. The third one, it allows for informed decision making. So it facilitates informed decision making by providing a detailed overview of the project objectives and constraints. So what's really important here guys is that your project objectives and constraints are well defined so that um, you'll be able to know how uh, identify each objective and determine the methodologies how you're going to achieve those objectives with consideration of the constraints that are inherent in the project. 
Now let's go to promotional services. So the purpose of promotional services is to generate financial support and public acceptance for the project. So it involves marketing the project to potential investors, stakeholders, and the general public to secure funding and build enthusiasm. So I think you're already uh, quite familiar with this, especially when you go to the malls. You could see that flyers are being distributed to people moving by by real estate companies. So that's already uh, a promotional uh, service. So most likely, uh, the images that you could see are the renderings of the houses, the developments that you see. Those were produced by an architectural firm or by an architect. So the components of promotional services, the first component is marketing strategy. So developing a plan to promote the project's unique features and benefits. So for example, if you have a project, and then I think uh, the main benefit is that it has a nice view of the ocean or a nice view of the mountain. So you must highlight that. Communication materials. So it, by creating brochures, presentations, and other materials to effectively communicate the project's vision and goals. Second compo uh, Third component is public relations. So engaging with the media and the community to create positive publicity and foster support for the project. Um, you could see that there's a lot of projects that are being mentioned also on YouTube. So they probably highlight the project is, um, for example, that uh, through this project you create a lot of jobs or this is a green design project, it's a sustainable project to help benefit the community. So that's for public relations. Then investor relations. So building relationships with potential investors and providing them with detailed information about the project's potential returns. So that's why class, uh, in your, I think in your, it's in design nine or ten, that you need to have a, a much clearer project feasibility study, so that you could determine the return of investment of uh, your clients. The importance of promotional services, the first is financial support. So it is essential for securing the funding needed to bring the project to fruition. Second is public acceptance. So it builds a positive image of the project, which is crucial for obtaining necessary approvals and permits. You know guys, uh, public acceptance is really important because if the public does not accept your project, there's a tendency that it's not going to be built because it, it, the, probably the occupants or those who are in neighboring communities might oppose what, the, what you are building or the project that is being proposed. So it's a public acceptance is really important. Next is project viability. So enhances the overall viability of the project by ensuring it has the necessary backing and support. So with promotional services, especially um, if you have already presented to the stakeholders, if they understood what the project is, then you'll have the necessary backing and support. So, they probably, you, you'll get, um, for example, with the stakeholders, you'll get the financial support. And uh, for the public, you'll also get their trust also. So, there will be no impediments that the project should not start. Because it's well promoted and we have understood that the intentions of the project is is good. So that's why promotional services is really important. Okay, next slide. Yes, okay, it does. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So the manner of providing services. So first is pro uh, proposal submission. So the architect submits a proposal to the client outlining the scope of services, the project timeline, and the terms of compensation. The proposal serves as the basis for the contract between the architect and the client. So that's the first. Second is the way, the way of rendering services. So you could also do this individually. So the architect may provide services personally particularly for smaller projects or specialized consult consultations. So smaller projects, we're talking about residential projects. 
but when you're going to projects that have bigger in scope uh, mostly they're done by uh, architectural firms okay, so, and through their own staff for larger projects the architect may employ a team of professionals to deliver the services under their supervision third is by association the architect may collaborate with other architects or professionals such as engineers or urban planners to provide a comprehensive range of services so you have to understand guys that uh, right now since we are already um, I think we are already in the age that um, everything is multidisciplinary in nature so you should know how to operate with other professionals so that the project will be successful then the importance of the manner of providing services first is flexibility so it allows the architect to adapt the service delivery method to the specific needs of the project and the clients second is efficiency so it ensures that the project is handled in a manner that optimizes res resources and expertise Third is collaboration, facilitates teamwork and interdisciplinary cooperation which can enhance the quality and creativity of the project. Okay, next slide. Okay. This is the methods of compensation. So the basis of compensation. So the compensation for architectural services is based on the architect's talents skills expertise and the level of services provided of course if you're already uh, good if you have a good reputation and then you already had a lot of projects of similar nature uh, you could already ask for more charge beyond that what is uh, stated here in our spp okay especially if you're already a well-known architect or if you have an expertise for that example you have a master's degree or if you have a doctorate about a certain field so it also dictates how much compensation you will receive so the methods of compensation you have direct personal expenses or dpa so compensation is based on the actual salaries of the personnel involved in the project plus a multiplier to cover overhead and profit of course you need to cover also overhead and, and profit also then the next is a fixed fee, so a set amount agreed upon at the start of the project, regardless of the project's duration or complexity. The next is per dime honorarium, a daily rate for services rendered, typically used for consultation or short-term engagements. The next we have mixed method, of course you would also combine them, so a combination of the above methods tailored to the specific needs of the project. So what are, uh, what are the factors influencing compensation? Of course, you have project complexity. So the more complex projects may require higher compensation due to the increased level of expertise and efforts required. The project duration. Longer projects may involve higher compensation to cover the extended period of service. And the architect's reputation. So highly reputable architects command higher fees due to their proven track record and expertise. Especially if you're already... Uh, in the profession for a long time and you have the academic backing for everything you have a master's degree or a doctorate so it would really help you out then the importance of clear compensation agreements is that for first is transparency so it ensures both the architect and the client have a clear understanding of the financial aspects of the project so it's really important uh, class that 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 you be transparent with your client okay so that's if you have a clear compensation agreement everything would be transparent the next is fairness so it aid in establishing a fair compensation structure that reflects the value of the services provided third is trust so it builds trust between the architect and the client contributing to a positive working relationship so it's really important guys that you have a positive working relationship with your client because without trust i don't think the project will succeed so if you want the client if you want to show the client that you are really a professional you must have clear compensation agreements with them so you shouldn't feel uh, especially for the young ones you feel shy when you when you ask for compensation but you should not really feel shy because that's uh, 
part of the uh, that's part of your profession um, receiving proper compensation for the hard work that you put into remember that um, when you practice you have a lot of overhead to cover you have to cover the overhead for the salaries of the your personnel in the office the rent for the office and then for the operations of the office such as the payment for the air conditioning the lighting for the computers and for the papers that going to be used so you really have to clear to have a clear compensation agreements when you face with clients okay so i think this ends our the part two of our lecture for spb 201 so i'll be posting our activities uh, in our padlet link so your activities uh, should be handwritten and should submit it next week so if you have any further uh, clarifications questions or concerns you can reach me anytime class okay so see you next week and have a nice day